if this is your first time here, I'd like to welcome you. Uh, my name is Bola Olu Jordan, and here at Cry Outreach, it's a platform where we provide biblical answers for your doctrinal questions. So if you have any question bothering on Jesus, Bible, God, baptism, faith walk, or anything like that, the church, please feel free to write your question out and we will look into it biblically, allowing scripture to interpret scripture. All right, if this is your first time, I'd like to ask you to uh, subscribe to this channel so that next time uh, another I come on here to uh, I come on air to answer any other question. You will be one of the first people to receive the notification. And of course, if you're watching this TV, on, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I'd like you to click the notification bell. And I also want you to like this video so that it can reach as many people as has the potential of reaching. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, go to the business of today, uh, which is a question asked by someone all the way from the Philippines. You know, uh, each time I receive question from the Philippines, I like to say one thing, I'll be back again. When I do not know, that's in God's hands, but I will be back there again. My last time was a very profitable time, and I'm trusting the Lord to open up another avenue to meet with, uh, to have a robust fellowship with uh, people uh, there again. Now, this here is your question, Abali. You said, uh, where do we get the concept of gathering in hundreds and thousands when the Bible says in Matthew 18 and 19, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Let's look into the scripture to answer this question. And it is indeed a good question. First and foremost, I'd like to say there are two answers to this question. A short answer, which I'm going to give now, and the long answer, which I'm going to give later on. Two or three, that phrase is actually a Jewish term. It's more or less like a witness. Throughout the Bible, you will say that word two or three, two or three, right from the Old, Old Testament, even to the New Testament. As a matter of fact, in the book of Revelation, the Bible talks about the two witnesses after the tribulation. There will be two witnesses that will come. Two is the number of man, just like three is the number of God, as well as six is the number of operation of, of man, and seven is the number of operation of God. So two means that uh, there is a witness. Let's say someone just says that I saw someone doing something, and they said, who else saw it? And said, no, it's only me. It's not going to be tenable. It's not going to be acceptable. But when you say I, we are two people, if two people can testify to a particular event, then it is accepted as credible enough. So it really does not mean that when we gather together as believers, it has to be only two people or three people. It can be two or 200. It can be three or 3,000. Let me quickly read uh, uh, some passages for you uh, from the scriptures. Uh, if you go to the same chapter, from verse 15 said moreover if your brother shall trespass against you go and tell him his fault between you and him alone if you sh if he shall hear you you have gained your brother but if he will not hear you then take with you one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word be established now you can see that the reason why two or three is very prominent is the fact that so that words can be established and also in the book of Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul writing to the assembly at Corinth, uh, he told them, he told them, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three. And by that, and by that course, and let one in. So what lesson do we learn from here? The witness makes it credible. To me, I will say it sounds fair enough both in legal or even in the social spectrum. When we gather, our gathering must be credible. The only way it can be credible is if we are more than one. It requires more than one person to make an event or a situation or a circumstance to be credible. So for our gathering to be called an assembly, it requires more than one person. It requires people. Otherwise, how can one person be an assembly? God is building an assembly. People is different from person. People is where there are more than one person.
person. That's when it becomes people and people makes an assembly. So you cannot say, for instance, the church is bad. The church I attend or I do not have a good church to attend. So I'm going to be a church on myself. I'm going to be an assembly on myself. You may have a very credible reason not to go to church, not to go to an assembly, not to gather with the brethren, not to gather with the saints. But you are not part of the assembly. You are not part of what Jesus is doing. You are not part of the people that died for. He didn't die for one person. He died for people. He wants us to have relationship with him. But more than relationship, he wants us to be a part of the gathering. When two or three people come together in Jesus' name and they gather, that is where Jesus is. At the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 says, Do not forsake the assembling of each other like the manner of some. It means that some, some people just like, I'm not going to the assembly. I'm not going to be there. I'm just going to be do fellowship on my own. It, no matter how credible your, your argument is, you are not part of the assembly. It has to be two or three. Maybe you are, if, you are, if you alone by yourself, you are more than two, then that's okay. But it takes two to be, to be an assembly. It takes two to gather, and it takes a gathering to be an assembly. The reason why Jesus says that is as a witness, so that we can witness the presence of Jesus, we can witness the presence of the Holy Spirit, we can witness one another, we can be a witness to one another. You know, Jesus Christ said, go into all the world and teach all nations, and you will be witnesses of me. Jesus wants us to be witnesses, just, not just one witness, he wants us they want us as a credible witness to come together and discuss what we have witnessed in our relationship. They want us, as many of us as have witnessed the resurrection of God in our life, in our heart. They want us to assemble together and have fellowship with one another. And that is when our testimony is credible. Otherwise, the testimony may not be credible. Some people have some super, super testimony of how they, they give their life to Jesus. Paul was always talking about this Damascus experience, and there were people there. He just woke up one morning, and he said, the Lord called me, and he said, son, I said, sir, he said, now you're saved. I said, yes, sir. Now go and start a ministry. He said, yes, sir. And you are the only witness. When you have men and leaders who have such a testimony, it is not credible. Anybody can do that. God wants a witness. Do you have a witness to your baptism? Do you have a witness to your born-again experience? Do you have a witness? Or is it just your own testimony? If it's your own testimony, it will not stand. And when it comes to fellowship, your fellowship must be with the brethren. You can't be too holy and be alone. There is an African proverb that says that no matter how agile a dog is, it cannot man two houses at the same time no matter how spiritual you are you can't be a witness for yourself you need a witness you can't gather all alone by yourself it has to be where two or three are that is where jesus is you if you choose to gather by yourself he is not there that's what he says it will interest you to know that when jesus christ said i will build my assembly I mean, many people, many translation of the Bible calls it, I will build my church. That's a wrong translation. The word church does not exist in the original manuscript. Church is a different thing that were known to people that lived in those days. He said, I will build my assembly. What he says, I will build my gathering. You know, just like a mother hen. A mother hen will gather the, the his chick his chickens together. And the, the Bible says that at the last days, the, uh, God will gather his elect together from the north, from the east, from the south, from the west. God is in the business of gathering together. So you can't be left out. You can't say, I'm a lone, I'm a lone ranger. I know there are circumstances, but I'm talking about when you it becomes a lifestyle for you. You think that is what it is. That is not what it is. Our gathering must be minimum of two, Three, it can be on, it can be ten thousand disciples on their own were more than two, they are more than three. And aside from the twelve disciples, 
Jesus had 70 disciples. He had 120 disciples. He had many other disciples. There's one thing to gather. There's another thing to gather together. Sometimes we do gather, but we do not gather together. So you probably you think it's a tautology of the of the Bible that they wrote gathering together, gather together. It just a gathering is enough. Why gathering together? I will show you what it really means to gather together. Because many times we gather, but we are not together. So God is building people. He's building people that gather in two, three, more than that. That is what Jesus is doing. He's building an assembly of people. He's not building an assembly of, of buildings. He's building people. His building people will be with him in heaven. So God is not building denominations. He's not building religious organizations. He's not building charity. He's not building charity. He's building something that he died for. He's coming back for what he died for. It's fair enough, isn't it? He suffered for something. He lost his life for it. And he said, I will come back. It's fair enough to expect him to come back for exactly what he died for. And he didn't die for he didn't die for buildings. He didn't die for tra traditions. He did not die for laws and doctrines. He died for the truth. And the truth is that even though we are many, we are one body. There's only one assembly, not two, just one. As many as we are all over the world, when we gather in our different local assembly, it recognizes us as one. So if you do not have a place where you gather with the saints, you are not part of the number, regardless of your level of spirituality, regardless of your title, regardless of anything, you have to be part of the gathering. We have to gather. Why can't we just stay in my home and stay in your home? No, you got to come out of your home and we have to come together and we have to come gather. Do you get it? It's a gathering. And if you believe God is building you, then gather with other people that God is building. In the book of Luke, chapter number 24, I guess from verse 49, Jesus told the disciples, he says, Tarry ye in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from an eye. And the book of Acts, they gathered, they waited for the promise of the Father, but they, they gathered together. I mean, Peter didn't say, well, you guys, you know what Jesus talked about, you know, I got to do some things and fix some things for you so that you can. No, you got to be there in the assembly. And it is not only in our gathering that we have to be two or three before Jesus can come there. Even when we gather our meetings, I, I will show you that even in our meetings, it's got to be two or three. It's not one man. God is not in the business of one man show. When you see a gathering that the leadership is one man, if everything is about one person, it's, you, can, you can point out to the owner the founder, right, of that place, that's not what God is doing. God, if you look into the scripture, you will see that even the leadership is two or three. It's plurality. He told Adam in the Garden of Eden, he says, it is not good for a man to be alone. God never wanted man to be alone. There must be a witness. The book of Proverbs says, a faithful witness will not lie. So we need a witness. We can be alone by ourselves, whether in the leadership position or in the followership position, we can be, we, it's got to be a gathering. Now, we have been able to establish the fact that when Jesus Christ said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be there, there I will be. It means that it could be 200, it could be 300, it could be more. But when we gather, he it says it's going to be there our gathering must be together. Number one, we have to gather. There's no exception. We just have to gather with the saints. And number two, it has to be together. That togetherness means having all things in common. Then again, uh, uh, when we gather, we, we have to gather in the name of Jesus. He said, there I will be in their midst. We have to know for sure if Jesus is present in our midst. Otherwise, we say like Moses, if your presence does not go with us, then we don't want to be in this place. And that's supposed to be our song. I'll see you again next time. If you have been blessed watching this video or listening to this, I'd like you to subscribe to this channel. 
And if you can uh, click the like button or maybe the notification button, it will help bring this video or the, this message to many others who may profit from it. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. May you be part of the gathering. I'll see you again next time.